Picture a world where a small town eye doctor decides it's not enough just to change lives from the operating room, but also wants to make his mark on the grand stage of American politics. That's the reality of Dr. Rand Paul, whose vision stretches far beyond the reach of an ophthalmologist's tools into the very chambers of the U.S. Senate. Born in 1963 in Pittsburgh to parents Ron and Carol Paul, Rand entered a household already steeped in both medicine and libertarian values. His father, Ron Paul, was himself an obstetrician who delivered over 4,000 babies, all while serving various stints as a U.S. representative, bringing a small government perspective to Capitol Hill. Young Rand demonstrated great intelligence and rapid advancement from an early age. He graduated Baylor University's honors program in just two and a half years, while also staying active with the swim team and leading the Young Conservatives student group. He then completed his medical training at Duke University's prestigious School of Medicine. After his residency, Dr. Paul returned to his father's adopted home state of Kentucky. He spent over 15 years building his ophthalmology practice and reputation for excellence in Bowling Green, performing complex surgeries like cataract removal, glaucoma treatment, LASIK, and corneal transplants. Seeing a need for expanded access, Rand later founded the Southern Kentucky Lions Eye Clinic, a charitable facility offering free vision care procedures to disadvantaged community members who couldn't afford them otherwise. But even while building his medical career, Rand Paul's interest in political engagement started years earlier. Back at Baylor in the 1980s, Rand led the university's Young Conservatives group in advocating for limited government and fiscal discipline. He brought that passion back to North Carolina initially, founding the North Carolina Taxpayers Union focused on reducing state tax burdens. But the North was just a pit stop. In the early 1990s, Rand decided to head further from his Pennsylvania roots and settle down with his new wife Kelly in Kentucky, the increasingly adopted home state of the Pauls. While establishing his medical practice, Rand remained actively engaged in libertarian political advocacy with an intimate view of constituents' economic frustrations. He founded Kentucky Taxpayers United and began building connections with rural communities fed up with Frankfurt and Washington bureaucracy. So make no mistake, Rand didn't just suddenly pivot into politics when he launched his trailblazing 2010 Senate campaign. He had actively honed his libertarian values and fiscal conservatism since his undergraduate days. When Rand spoke to growing crowds, he tapped into grassroots outrage over the root problems he saw plaguing America, an ever-expanding federal government ballooning in size, debt, and overreach, while failing to effectively serve the needs of citizens. To Rand, reeling an out-of-control federal power and spending was the only way to preserve justice and opportunity for coming generations of Americans. And his vision stood out not just for its boldness, but also its specifics, like constitutional amendments, forcing a balanced budget and term limits, along with fully auditing the Federal Reserve's ballooning but opaque balance sheet. For many rural Kentucky families and small business owners frustrated with stagnation in Washington, Rand Paul's fresh take sounded like exactly the strong medicine America needed. His home visits to all 120 Kentucky counties revealed deep grievances with the cultural elite's increasing disconnection from the average taxpayer. As Rand saw it, the political class had slowly boiled the frog of big government, and only an uncompromising surge of principled leadership could jolt Americans awake before their freedoms evaporated forever. Rand aggressively went after Republicans and Democrats alike for perpetuating what he termed the Washington machine choking real opportunity out of our economy. He was unafraid to blast the status quo on both sides of the aisle for abandoning working America to serve special interests. At one campaign stop, Rand even took a baseball bat, literally to the tax code, taking swings at the 74,000 pages of bureaucracy that had become a symbol of Washington's self-serving ineffectiveness and waste. Rand mobilized a grassroots army united by outrage against inefficient and tone-deaf governance that left everyday people struggling. A surge of Tea Party energy propelled his unlikely victor over Kentucky's hand-picked Republican establishment choice for Senate. Having proven he could win on the back of his steadfast small government ideals, Rand kept that laser focus for the general election, emerging victorious over tough Democratic and Libertarian challengers as well. 
his competitive victory spoke to the depth of voter dissatisfaction with the status quo across party lines. Rand Paul wasted no time making his libertarian mark on Capitol Hill, establishing his reputation as a stubborn thorn in leadership's side. He anchored his stances unflinchingly to his principles rather than bending to political winds. Whether it was unapologetically voting against his own party's surveillance measures or being the lone dissenter blocking bipartisan efforts to restrict gun rights, Rand wasn't afraid to stand alone when he felt constitutional freedoms were under assault, and his stubborn consistency quickly earned national notice. When Rand spoke out for over 13 straight hours in an epic 2013 filibuster against President Obama's drone strike program, the hashtag StandWithRand lit up Twitter and this unlikely upstart senator suddenly found himself rallying nationwide support. The traditional power centers in Washington may have scoffed, but Rand considered bringing ignored rural perspectives to light as central to his role, whether it made him popular among colleagues or not. He had promised Kentuckians not to get cozy floating along with the genteel Congressional Country Club. Rand intended to remain an unwavering voice for the taxpayers left out of the elite ruling class's cocktail party conversations. Beyond Washington, Rand Paul maintains firm roots in his local Kentucky community of Bowling Green. He resides with his wife Kelly and their three sons in the same neighborhood where they started their family close to 30 years ago. Even the injury and lung damage Rand suffered during a violent 2017 attack from a neighbor has not dampened the senator's frontier grit on behalf of his constituents. While Rand's style and rhetoric frequently set him at odds with power players in both parties, his conviction consistently appeals to everyday Americans feeling left behind by the Washington establishment. And as speculation stirs over Rand's outlook for national office, he already enjoys substantial fundraising and grassroots support that could swiftly ramp up a higher profile campaign. Of course, Rand also faces skeptics, questioning whether his rigid approach can capture broad appeal beyond his core following if he were to seek the presidency. But regardless what comes next, his record of trailblazing with unyielding personal conviction has already left an indelible libertarian influence in Washington, and clearly signals further political waves still to come. Love him or hate him, Rand Paul's trajectory from physician to high-profile lawmaker is an undeniably unique profile in convictions colliding with political opportunity. And at 60 years old, his visible impact on major national issues shows we likely have not seen the last of Dr. Rand Paul's vision for guiding America's future. So as we wrap up this behind-the-scenes dive into Rand Paul's winding road, from local doctor to senator now, in the national political spotlight, be sure to like this video and subscribe for ongoing updates. And drop a comment sharing your perspectives on Rand's journey so far, or what other political figures you want to see covered in the days ahead. Your engagement is what enables us to keep highlighting the intriguing real-life stories behind today's government leaders. Thanks for spending part of your day understanding what shaped Rand Paul's call to public service. Now get active and make your voice heard on the direction of America's future.